So friends, welcome back to our channel, Learn with Gix. Uh, today I have invited Shri Vignesh for the live Power BI mock interview. So let's begin with the interview round. And before that, please do like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're new to it, and you can also follow me on Instagram, Learn with Gix. Hi Vignesh, uh, can you please introduce yourself first? Fine, sir. Sir, uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. I am Sri Vignesh from Oteri Vandalur Extension, and I have a Bachelor's of Commerce degree uh, with a CGP of 8.4. And I've completed my degree in uh, 2024 June. From then till now, for the past eight months, I have been preparing myself for get into an analytical position, analytical role. So that brings me to the next point, which is my projects. So I, I have uh, six or seven projects in my portfolio, uh, leveraging tools like Excel, SQL, Microsoft, and Power BI. So particularly speaking about the Power BI, I have uh, three projects, three end-to-end -end analytical solution using Power BI in that two in different uh, domains. For example, hospitality domain, transportation and mobility domain, and also consumer electronic goods also I have did some projects. So that brings me to the next point, which is my strength and weakness. So I am a continuous learner and I am a storyteller. That is my strength. And I consider my weaknesses. So whenever I will uh, try to learn some new topic, I will dive deep into the topic. That's, uh, I feel like getting lost into the topic. And speaking about my online credibility, I have decent LinkedIn engagement. And also I run a YouTube channel where I will be posting my daily learnings in uh, PL300 preparation. I will be shooting and recording the video of every topic in PL300 and post it on YouTube to help my fellow aspirants and also to improve my communication skills, sir. That's it about me, sir. Okay, so you talked about Power BI project. So what kind of data sources you have used? Sir, I have used uh, import mode only, sir. But uh, I know about direct query mode, uh, live connection and, and also composite mode, sir. Okay, what is live connection? The live connection is nothing but it's, it is very similar to the direct connection mode sir direct query mode but the but the thing is the data will be come from uh, azure analysis services or a, a sql uh, analysis services sir but uh, power uh, power bi will act only as a uh, layer of visualization sir there is no other transformation or data modeling or data anything uh, cannot be done with data only it acts act as a uh, layer of uh, you know uh, visualization sir so have you utilized multiple data sources while creating Power BI reports? Yes, sir. I do. Uh, I did use like that, sir. Whenever uh, one in one my one of my project, I used uh, my uh, MySQL as a data source. In that pro project itself, I used uh, Excel as an uh, another uh, data source, sir. Yes, sir. I did this, sir. Okay. So describe your approach to uh, deal with missing values in Power Query. Yes, sir. So uh, missing values. First of all, I will uh, go to my business owner and I will uh, consult with him. Uh, if uh, it is not the case, I will. Uh, uh, if the case, if the business owner told me to remove it, I will remove. If it is not the case, I will use uh, average or standard deviation, or you know, uh, in other case, I will use forward fill or backward fill if it is possible, sir. Okay. So can you combine uh, a text column with a numeric data type column? Uh, uh, combine. Uh, it is. Uh, I think it is not possible to combine text with the uh, uh, numeric data type sir but we can uh, do some m uh, language transformation by uh, for doing this sir what is the necessary condition uh, to append any two tables sir yes sir there are three uh, major uh, kind of uh, conditions is to be satisfied sir uh, the first thing is all the headers should be same uh, all the headers in the two tables should be same and data type should be same and also equal number of columns should be same sir and if suppose uh, columns are more in one table and the less in the second table then what will happen if you try to append yes sir it will still get up on that but the null values will be uh, present in the table which is has less columns sir okay so the ignition the chat box i have pasted something so suppose you have value like this okay how will you extract yes, numbers from this for example i need one four three three four two six as a result the one option is uh, columns from example sir if it is not uh, in the case we can uh, select text select dot text there is an option sir in in that we have to put some set brackets and extract the one uh, one two nine numbers sir so sir, shall i shall i uh, write uh, write the code for it yeah yeah you can sir i have pasted uh, the answer for it sir so uh, by doing this in m query we can ex extract the numbers only sir okay fine so what kind of warning message do we get uh, when we uh, have many to many relationship in our data model sir there will be a red color uh, identification mark will be there and saying that uh, so uh, connecting many to many relationship can result in ambi ambiguous result so uh, uh, it will be like that sir 
can you give an example where you can get this kind of ambiguous results can you give any practical example oh yes sir suppose when you have a duplicate column in a dimension table when you are trying to uh, uh, make connection between dimension and fact table then this uh, message will be pop up sir okay in which scenario should we go for a snowflake schema sir uh, when it not when it is uh, we are prioritizing storage uh, instead of performance in that case we can go with a snowflake schema where there will be a dimension table would be broken down into small tables to avoid redundancy and to improve data integrity sir okay do you know about degenerate dimensions yeah, uh, yes sir i do know about it a degeneration uh, dimension is nothing but the separate dimension table will not present in the data model instead the the attributes will be present in the fact table itself sir okay so suppose there is a two table there are two tables and you have one to one relationship so what will be the kind of uh, direction of the relationship between those two tables it will be will it be a single direction or it will be multi direction or means bi directional sir yes sir uh, when we have a, a, a one to one relationship most uh, commonly it will be bi directional filter only sir what is the reason behind this sir i uh, because of uh, we we want to filter it by both the side of the table sir that's why bi directional filter will be automatically into it sir okay what is the difference between related and lookup value dax function sir yes sir uh, related table uh, sorry related function is when you have relationship between two tables and you want to pull the data from one table to another table in that case you can use a related a relate function related function to pull the data from another table sir but in lookup lookup is similar to the lookup function in uh, excel sir you know you don't need to have some relationship between tables but you you should have common tables to do the search value and based on that search value the value will be pulled into an another table sir okay suppose there is a requirement and you need to show total sales value that that is happening only on weekends okay and it should yes. be displayed dynamically so how will you create that dax code sure sir so my uh, dax should be um, uh, responsible to the external filter also right sir yeah i'm i'm just writing sir so i just posted the answer here sir sir uh, first of all i will uh, i i wrote an calculate function so which is an, an uh, which will change the row context into filter context so the sum of sales is an expression sir that that i should calculate and the filter is all selected all selected what it will do no it will uh, keep the uh, filters which i wrote and if the external filters is applied then it will react to the based on that filter sir okay how will you how will you write the or how will you calculate the running total for any company i'm just writing sir so uh, i first of all i will i used calculate to calculate the the expression sir then Uh, i have a date filter so in the filter part i i wrote date and less than or equal to max date will uh, give me the cumulative sum sir okay yeah have you utilized parallel period dax function sir parallel period i have heard about it and i i have not used it i, I guess okay vignes suppose uh, you have a visual in your power bi report and that visual it is saying loading it's not loading properly what can be the possible reason behind this yes sir so suppose the dax the meshes that is used in that uh, visual may not be uh, very uh, optimized in in terms of uh, in terms of your dax function so in that case i can go to the dax functions and i can change it and i can optimize it so after that i will check whether it is working or not so this is one way of doing it and uh, and i can use also performance analysis to use to, to how much time it is taking to load that visual and by seeing that what is the problem whether the dax query is problem or the visual is problem or the other time taken is a problem so by analyzing three three, three these three things i can uh, evaluate and there is a third party software also which is uh, dax studio i can go to them and uh, how much time is taken i can see that as well so yeah so do you know about any recent uh, major update in power bi yes sir i saw some uh, 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 there is a major update tdml there is a tabular data modeling uh, they they're introduced in power bi uh, yes sir I, i know about it but i have to read about it sir tell me the difference between bookmarks and drill through filters sir yes sir so uh, bookmarks is uh, both are uh, for user, users used for user interaction purpose and if you want to uh, perform your uh, 
data or your uh, report in uh, using the buttons so suppose you go to this button you go to this button so keeping that inside and in, inside 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 so this is called uh, bookmark sir and uh, drill through fi filter is nothing but if you have some limited visual and in that limited visual you have to you have no space to show the show the uh, extra extra information about the visual but you have to uh, show in in this case uh, you can use drill through filter uh, first of all, you should go to another separate page and in that page you have to customize the drill through uh, page and you have to keep the uh, column which is used in the first visual. You have to keep the same same column in the second visual also, second page also. After this, you have to enable the drill through option. Uh, you will be uh, able to see some back, back icon and all. After that, you have to assign the drill through to the first visual. So after this, if, you, if your user tries to interact with the visual, it will it will take him to the another page and it will show the uh, various kind of information you want to show to your user okay suppose you have built your report power bi report how will you lock everything on your report page so that uh, nobody can uh, change it currently i don't i'm not aware of this uh, uh, locking kind of thing but after this interview i am going to check that sir okay fine in which case uh, should we go for an area chart uh, area chart sir suppose uh, we want to show the trends whether we, we suppose we have two categories sir in in that case which category is performing which category is overperforming one or which category is underperforming the other in that case we will be using era chart sir okay any any recent challenge that you have faced uh, and you wanted to share so recent problem that i faced is uh, i was building some dashboards to my recent project and in that time uh, for visually appealing purpose i used some some kind of uh, a lot of visuals so after doing that my report got got very slow so by by seeing this, uh, I realized that using a lot of visual is, is not going to make sense. But understanding the business problem and putting the right visual will uh, will, en will enhance the report. Uh, this is what the recent problem I faced and the lesson I learned from this. That's it. In which case, uh, should we go for a premium license in Power BI service? So uh, when you are working for an uh, organization who has a lot of users, in that case, you should opt for a premium license. Uh, in recent times, premium license has been changed to uh, Power BI Ember. It is uh, based on the user base you have in the your your organization. So, in if the report is hosted in premium uh, capacity, you have to you don't have to give the pro license to the viewers. You can also share it in a free uh, in a free way, sir. Okay. So, have you implemented role level security in any case? Yes, sir. I I do uh, theoretical knowledge about role level security. I can explain, sir. So suppose uh, I give a practical use case. Uh, I am a re regional manager from Germany. You are a regional manager from India. And we don't want to overlap our roles because uh, when you see the data, we don't want to see your data and you don't want to see my data. So it is a more interrupting process. For this purpose, Power BI uh, developer will restrict the access of the data at the role level itself. Sir. This process is called role level security. There is two, two types of role level security. Sir. One is static level, uh, role level security, the another one is dynamic role level security. The static role level security is nothing but if you do, if you developer should uh, customize the filter and also he should go to the Power BI service to assign the users for it. And dynamic role level security is nothing but uh, uh, you, you have, a, but there is a condition to implement dynamic role level security. You should have a email address of the user who is going to be logged into the report and that email ID of, of the user should be assigned to the country is going to manage. If this is uh, the case, you can use user principal uh, name to uh, dynamically uh, analyze, dynamically uh, you know uh, identify the user. And uh, if the user is there, uh, and we have to go to the service and we have to customize the uh, the email ID. After that, if the user is uh, logging into the report, it will show only the relevant data based on his credentials. Sir. Okay. Do you know how to test this in Power BI service? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, static low level security is uh, easy to test. Uh, there is uh, one step only uh, when, when there you will be having the test option in the modeling tab. And dynamic low level security also, you have to uh, uh, enable two options. One is the dynamic role level security you apply. Uh, another, there is an option. Uh, right now, I cannot recollect it. But they have to uh, enable two options in the uh, test uh, window. Uh, while, while doing this, it will uh, it will show the right data. Then how will you share that report to your end users? Yes, sir. So there are various options. Uh, if you are working for an organization and the people of uh, you are going to share the reports is limited, you can directly use the email address of the person 
to share the report if your organization has a large number of user base and you want to send to the large uh, large user uh, audience you should use there is two ways the one is you can use uh, uh, you can use azure directory group where you will be creating uh, your members and putting it there and you can share it to the group otherwise you can use uh, power bi app you can publish your report there and you can give the access to your users vignesh i am done from my side uh, so friends whoever are watching this video please let me know in the comment box how well he performed in the interview and if you have any better answers for the questions he answered so thank you so much vignesh